Okay. Sir Hans in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Stuck, Stuck in the Middle. <laughs> <laughs> I always gotta say it together. No, nah, man. I mean, we just you know we didn't really you know talk about the whole thing. But anyways, man, let's get to it. Let's get to it. How was everybody's weekend? Uh, weekend was great, man. I just came back from New York. How was that? Big Apple and cold. We got Stella in the building right now. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted us to talk about you know like the weekend before you know we just had guests. You know so. <laughs> Is yeah. she here? She yeah. here. Now, before we jump into it, we want to apologize, you know what I mean, to our consistent listeners about last week. You know what I mean? We got put in a loop. Man. They gave us a fugazi schedule plan, back whatever. Up, even back or fail. Man, yeah. it's all good, man. It's all good. You know what's funny, though? Um, you know, I'm a big fan of um, Bill Maher, right? Mm-hmm. So, last, I mean, um, last week, Monday, you know, I went online trying to look for that episode, but I couldn't find it. Then I remembered it dawned on me that it was Easter, so I guess they took a break for Easter. Oh, so. okay, everybody okay, took a break okay, for yeah, Easter. I was trying to tell you, like, let's take an okay. Easter break. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. but we're not everybody, man. But <laughs> because everybody did, we're good. We're good. So, but anyways, we still apologize, you know, for those who were looking forward to yeah. Easter's episode. But we back today with a bang. You know what I mean? Man, we've been looking forward to this one for like since this pod started. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stella's in the building. Stella Kinawa. Mm. I say it right? Yes, you did. How would you say Kinawa. it? Kinawa. Kinawa. Mm-hmm. Kinawa. Man. Is that, is that, is that mean? Is that, that's not a wing. It is, it is not a wing. It's just the name. My great grandmother's name. The sound of Hawaiian. And, um, does it now? I've heard a lot of people say it sounds more uh, Japanese or something. Mm-hmm. Like uh, Okinawa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah, state yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, 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 I get that a lot. Yeah. Man, let me yeah. bring it. Let me bring it to where we're from, Awing, right? You know, there's that, there's that animal called um, Akinamoa. <laughs> <laughs> what animal is that? It's a, it's a, it's a rat. Oh. It's known for. They uh, got rats in that one? Yeah, man. They got plenty of rats. They got, they got all kinds of rats, man. They even got regular rats. Mm. Believe it or wait, not. Wait, what's a regular rat and what's an unregular rat? <laughs> <laughs> where are we going? <laughs> man, anyways, Akinamoa is a, you know, it's a rat that. Steals a lot of things, not mm-hmm. to say you know you are, but it steals a lot of <laughs> precious things, and it hides them. Interesting. So, yeah. I right. learned that from my mother. <laughs> Man, but, yeah. But anyways, we have the CEO of um, CEO and founder of Real Afrique LLC. Um, you know what? Just please introduce yourself, like Absolutely. everything you do, because it's a lot. Absolutely, we'll do. Um. Well, first, I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to talk about my platform here. Um, you all are doing an amazing job with this um, podcast, and I'm sure a lot of you know people of of Cameroonian and people of African descent, you know, are excited about you know the folks that you bring here mm-hmm. to inspire yeah. you know a lot of you know of our people you know to do to do bigger and better things. Um, well, my name is Stella Kinawa, and uh, I am the CEO and founder of Rue Afrique. Uh, Rue Afrique is essentially um, it's a South Florida-based platform that's aimed at promoting African, the African culture and lifestyles mm-hmm. um, through events and business partnerships. So uh, basically, you know, I help showcase the African culture um, to the community, to people who may not necessarily be, um, aware of the community yeah. and, you know, the cultures, the traditions and all that good yeah. stuff. So that's where I come in to okay. kind of showcase that. Okay. So let, moving forward, let's add, I want to ask like what inspired you like to start a uh, rule of freak? That's a great question. And, uh, <laughs> Honestly, what inspired me was, um, all right, so I consider myself a foodie. You know, I like, you know, I like eating, puff puff is my favorite thing. Oh, like, okay. I listen, just had that this morning. You, a puff puff in that pop. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot mess with me and my puff puff. I mean, I, that's a big deal for me. Uh-huh. But um, anyway, the story behind it was just basically, you know, I 
you know, I lived in South Florida or I live in South Florida for about 13 years now, 13, 14 years. <clears throat> and um, I just wanted to go somewhere where I could, you know, experience my culture, you know, listen to music, eat puff puff, eat soya. And, um, you know, just basically engage with my mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. But I found out that, you know, South Florida does not have as many, um, you know, community com events, right? I would say that bring both African descent together. Yes. Is, so, there, is there like a big African community down in Florida? There is. You'll be surprised there is. But we mean, are very dispersed. You know, everybody kind of keeps to their own and, you know, people. Okay. Yes. So you so, use that you use that middle person to bring everybody that's together. Where I, I, I was like, no, this cannot be happening. We need to, you know, um, come together. Mm -hmm. You know, essentially, you know, do events that will bring us together. That's how Rear Freak started. What it is now, it's... It's another story, okay. you know, because, there, yeah. yeah, and you know, and that's one thing with entrepreneurship, you know, and being an entrepreneur, you have to be open to listening to your market mm -hmm. and, you know, listening to what they want so you can deliver that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. How, how like, you know, so was it like the, the idea birth out of, you know, you, you just went through like, you know, how the idea birth into, we, did you have people like, you know, you were bouncing off of, you were just like, yo, like, I'm doing this. <laughs> And, you know, I'm kicking it up the road. And so how was oh, that yeah. the inception? In, in the beginning, you know, I started off with, uh, um, you know, with kind of like a, I would say, selfish mindset mm -hmm. with lack of a, lack of a, for lack of a better word, um, because I just wanted to fix a problem that was in my community. I went in there, I was like, regardless of what is going to happen or what the outcome of Rio Freak is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to solve this problem. I want to be able to build a community where, you know, um, if I want to find, you know, like an Ankara dress, I know where to go find it. If I want to, mm -hmm. you know, eat African food, I know where to go find it. So that's how Rio Freak started with that mindset. Then I realized that, you know, you can't always do everything on your own. Yeah. So um, as an entrepreneur, you have to be willing to, you know, um, receive feedback and be okay with that. Yeah. Uh, however, it's important to keep the core value of your business, you know, the same, which is essentially what I'm doing with Rear Freak right now. Um, I definitely had a lot of input from uh, my my younger sister, my baby sister. Shout out to um, Relindis Mba. In she, the building. <laughs> <laughs> she um, definitely uh, was a huge, he is a huge support system um, for the advancement of Rio Freak. Um, so, but yeah. Hey, before we move further, like, can you explain what the meaning of Rio Afrique is? Sure, sure. Uh, so Rio Afrique uh, is a French word for basically street Africa. It's, 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 um, Rio is street, means street, mm -hmm. and Afrique, well, that's Africa. Yeah. And uh, the concept behind that was, well, you know, you would find everything you want that's African related in this street, in this oh, this okay. platform. Dope. So that's how the name came about. All right. Do you do you find yourself having to explain that a lot? Because I did not guess. That. Really? That's, that's <laughs> um, you know, no, actually, it's just more of the pronunciation yeah, that yeah, I've, yeah. you know people struggle a lot with. Um, but you know, I was like, y'all gonna learn French today, and, you know, I that's okay. <laughs> I mean, you pronounce it so. Perfectly. Like, do you okay. speak French? I do. I oh, do. Okay. Um, you know, I am originally originally from Cameroon. And, uh, you know, and in Cameroon, you know, we speak both English and French. So, although I was born and I was, well, I am from the English-speaking part of Cameroon, mm -hmm. but I was born and, I was born and raised in the French-speaking part of Cameroon. Oh, okay. So, I kind of grew up speaking both languages. And um, I chose a French name per se, just to show how diverse Africa is. I didn't want to do the traditional, maybe English name, you know. So I, I branched out. Okay. So yeah. I'm sure that's pretty much helped you out and like trying to, um, get people from who speak French absolutely into the um absolutely into the organization. Yes, so absolutely. that that makes it easy for them mm -hmm. because they know you speak French and they could like communicate. You're with you. you're so right about that. And okay. uh the amount of uh, um attention and uh you know people who have reached out to me who are from French 
speak in Africa to partner and do events have been, you know, have been increasing lately because of that name. blowing up out here. <laughs> oh, so, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> when you talk about partnering to do events, right? Yes. Is there a fee to part? I mean, like, do you charge people to, you know, use your platform to promote their platform? Well, um, Rio Freak is uh, 10 months old. Okay. Right now. Shout out, shout out, yes. shout out. Rio Freak is 10. <laughs> Thank you. And it's been a constant growth. It's been a steady growth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and it, it's been challenging sometimes because I still hold a nine to five, I still have a full time job. So, mm. which is? Which I work at a university. I am the assistant director at a university called Florida Atlantic University. So um, I help oh. with a lot of uh, recruitment and event planning and all that stuff. And you're a mother university. too. I'm a mother. I have a beautiful, beautiful eight-year-old. Shout out to my guy, my boo-boo. Aww, shout, shout, out, out my... shout out, shout out, shout <laughs> out. <laughs> Nine to five and rural freak. Because yes. like, you know what I'm saying? If people listening, you know what I'm saying? Look up rural freak and you're going to see like the excellent quality. And you look at it like, you know what I'm saying, online. You're like, yo, this is great work. So how do you balance that? You know, like yes, holding that... a nine to five and like running this awesome platform. And you know what? I have been asked that uh, uh, numerous occasion and uh, especially from women who are trying to step into the you know starting their own businesses and stuff and you know it all you know boils down to one thing and that's passion you know how passionate are you about this this um, project how passionate mm-hmm. are you about delivering this product or this service you know um, at the end of the day that's what takes you to the next level mm-hmm. that passion um, and also, I have been able to um, to be disciplined. <laughs> I cannot begin to begin to tell you <laughs> the importance of discipline when it comes yeah. to you know being an entrepreneur, and especially since you, if especially if you're holding a nine to five, you know, and you know, given that I'm a single mother, that comes into play as well. So you have to, um, you know, be able to manage and balance your time to make sure that you're giving, you know, in the right amount of energy to each. Do you, you have know. sleepless nights? Actually, no. In the beginning, yes. But now I have, you know, kind of figured out a schedule that works out for me. And that includes um, waking up extremely early in the morning, mm. sometimes 4 a.m. to work on some projects. Yes. Um, and uh, and what time do you normally go to bed? Uh, okay. So my typical <clears throat> day, let's talk about my typical day. Yeah. So I work from, uh, let's say Monday, you know, I get off at five, I go home, you know, I, I pick up my son from school. Take him home, you know, help him with his homework, and then we have dinner, and then he goes to bed. Usually, I stay up for like an hour, you know, to, I don't know, check my emails. Sometimes it depends. It varies. It could, I could check my emails, or I could, I don't know, just catch up on my show because I need some <laughs> me time as well, you know, hey, so man. those are important. Hey, those are important, and, uh, but I dedicate an hour before I go to bed for Rio Freak. And when I wake up in the morning, I dedicate at 4 a.m. That is um, till about 7 to Rio Freak as well, 4 to 7 a.m. We were just talking earlier, me and AK, um, about like motivation and, you know, so making time for what you're motivated Mm -hmm. um, to do. And, you know, the other party in the conversation, like that's, they don't necessarily feel that that's true. You know, if you you can be motivated about something and, you know, like, and not make time for it. Yes, that that's right. That is true. There's two different things. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking like, oh. <laughs> no, because I, I I was just thinking about the whole thing. You know how females be like, um, if you was interested in me, you make time and stuff like that. So you know, I mean, I, <laughs> well, I mean, first, like to me, in my humble opinion, right, mm-hmm. I would like to say. The interest you show towards a woman is very different from what you show your business. It's two different True things. That. And I True hate, that. I personally hate, and I know hate is a strong word, but mm-hmm. I personally hate when a woman will um, compare both. Mm-hmm. It just makes no sense yeah. to me. But then again, I can't blame her because she's not a man. Mm-hmm. And she cannot say it from a man's perspective. Same way as I'm not a woman, and it's hard for me to understand her feelings and stuff. So we just have to find like that medium, mm-hmm. which is really hard. 
yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, so that was a little segue. <laughs> Let's get back on Conversation track. went from zero to one hundred. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking, I don't know. Why but I, I, I want, I want, I want to ask you though, like, because you know, so you look at the content online, and it's so like the graphics are awesome. You know, I, you know, visited the website. It says, "Be right back. We're under construction." Mm-hmm. I understand, mm-hmm. but like, do you run the online platform yourself? I do, and also, and um, I do. I create all the content. And uh, sometimes my sister, you know, chimes in as well. So, but most of the time, I create all the content for We Are Fake. We Are Fake. We Are Fake. We Are Fake. Yeah. Do you, do, are you in that space where, like, you just feel like you have to be hands-on with everything? Because I know, like, a business person is very hard to mm-hmm. be hands-off. Mm-hmm. Because you just have this vision. You want everything to be perfect how you see it. And you can't delegate a task to somebody else. You know what? Um, That's a very good question. Um, And I've honestly gotten to a point where I I actually will be completely comfortable sharing, you know, something that I may not necessarily be uh, good at to somebody else. So hire somebody to handle a piece of real freak. I'm completely comfortable with that because that's what in my opinion, makes a good entrepreneur. You're not going to be perfect at everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm perfectly okay with that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but for my vision of Rio Freak to come to life, I need to be able to bring in people into my team that have the same amount of energy and that are, you know, great at uh, social media, yeah. you know, pitching a venue for an event, you know, and all that stuff. So, um, but right now, you know, I feel comfortable because the, the vision Mission of Rio Freak is clear mm. now to where I'm okay to to uh, share some the responsibility. Yeah, 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 basically. Yeah. So yeah. while you're at work, right? Mm-hmm. Um, are there moments when you take a little time off to work on Rio Freak? I I would say no to that, and here the reason the reason why I say that is because. Um, no one, yes, yes and no, both. I work nine to five, right? Mm-hmm. However, um, part of my job is being in meetings a lot of the time. So when I get, if I start a project, you know, and you're fixed during my lunchtime, for instance, there's no way I'm going to complete that in time because I am, I get distracted mm. and, uh, the focus is not there. And I like to be focused when I work. So, um, most of the time I would just do work during my work hours and then go home and then focus on rear freak. How I want to, I want to touch on like the uh, event, you know what I'm saying? Planning aspect of it. Cause that, you know, that's a lot of what I see, what rear freak is, you know, uh, been doing lately. And you have an event coming up next week. I do. Want to talk a little bit about I that? Before? Yes, absolutely. So, um, next week on April 28th. Um, I have an event called Watuwema. And Watuwema is uh, basically means good people in Swahili. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what it means. And um, the event is it's a fundraiser to help um, in the fight against malaria in sub-Saharan Africa. So um, the event is going to encompass um, vendors, African Vendors who sell African fabric, fashion, a console. Yeah. And then I'm also going to have an artist, a local artist, um, Reflex. Shout out to Reflex. Yay. <laughs> 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 and, um, you know, but basically I'm creating an environment where folks can come and have a good time, enjoy the culture <laughs> while donating, you yeah. know, while mm-hmm. um uh, giving back to a good cause. Because uh, right now, as we speak, every two minutes, a child dies of malaria in sub-Saharan Africa. Facts. I mean, that mm. is, <laughs> it blows my mind. Mm. And Every two um, seconds. Every, I'm sorry, every two minutes. Two minutes. Two every, minutes. Minutes. Yeah, still, every two minutes. Every two minutes. And malaria is a preventable and treatable disease. And I don't think that any kid should be dying in this 21st century of that. Yeah. So what, uh, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about advocating for uh, the fight against malaria is because, you know, as a kid, I had malaria numerous times. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't even count. I mean, like, I asked my mom two weeks ago, I was like, Ma, 
How many times have I had malaria as a kid? And she was like, stay. I don't even know. I don't remember how many times you've had malaria. So wow. that's how, like, I was, I always got sick. And, you know, and if you think about it, you know, there is a ripple effect to that when somebody is sick and when, you know, and they don't have to go to school, the effect of malaria on the economy mm-hmm. and all that good stuff. So, you know, while it may seem that, you know, a lot of us here in the diaspora are not connected to what's going back home, these affect us in the long run. And, you know, and, and part of why I'm, you know, part of why I do Rear Freak is to help improve the economy back home because most of the initiatives that I will be doing and events I'll be planning would be to spread the word of what's going on in Africa and how, you know, um, folks can support yeah, I mean, like... They call it development uh, in in Africa. Yeah. I mean, like, I would say people people do care about what's going on back home. Mm-hmm. For me, my own opinion about it is who am I donating my money to? Mm-hmm. You know, it's the organization mm-hmm. that I'm donating money to. Mm-hmm. That counts because some people... You're going to donate to some people and to take that, That's right. you know, to keep That's half right. of themselves and then to try to use half mm-hmm. for something else. And then it ends up in somebody else's yes. pocket. So mm-hmm. we, I mean, most people are looking for that credible source. And Absolutely. if they feel like it's not credible, mm-hmm. then there's no need for them to donate. And so. that's a, a very, very valid concern, you know, because there's just so many folks out there and organizations that just use people's monies for their own, you know, personal vendetta i guess so unfortunately yeah it's sad it's sad to say that um but um i would tell you all that all the funds that we receive from uh what Wema, which is on friday all the proceeds go to uh nothing but nets so i'm not getting paid for this mm-hmm. uh, no um a lot of uh organizations sponsored the event so um i and i'm thankful for that that they were able to donate a space to us, help mm. with printing needs. Mm. So I would like to say that, you know, that sh- that alone should probably show that, you know, the, of the credibility yeah. of Reifrik. Um mm. But, you know, yeah, but 100% of the funds, of the money, the $20 that you donate for Watuwema all go to um, the fight against malaria in Sub-Saharan Africa. But. And I got to mention the link. Watuwema.eventbrite.com. That's where all the donations. Watuwema. Go to Wema. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget where you so, come from. So please, 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 please go right. donate. Does that all correlate with your upcoming event with Why You Really Here? I know, I mean, it's, it's very nice to have you here, but you didn't just come to D.C. just for stuck in the that's middle. Right, you just right. happened to be here that's for right. something else, the, right. the Mallory Conference. How did that go? So, yes, uh, I am here for a three-day conference um, that is... Uh, that was that is being hosted by Nothing But Nets, which is a branch of the United Nations. And we are here, we as in myself and my sister, mm. Relindis, uh, we are here today um, to learn how to be better advocates. You know, we want to okay. learn how to be better advocates in the fight against malaria. And we are currently getting the tools that we need, um, you know, whether it's, you know, social media influence or just simply um, learning how to uh, put together a great fundraiser. Um, so we're going to also be going to Congress on Tuesday. Mm. I'm going to meet with uh, uh, some of the Congress members and, you know, just to talk about the importance of uh, continuous funding of the President's Malaria Initiative. So that is why we're here this weekend uh, to kind of um, do that and uh, more so um, April 25th that's a Tuesday is World Malaria Day so it kind of works out perfect oh okay. yeah okay so like how how is uh, you might have touched on this and I mean how is Rural Freak uh, funded currently it's all me it's all me right now initially when I you know um, it's, so it's like an NGO uh, not for profit organization Real Africa is a for-profit organization. Okay. Okay. It's for-profit. Okay. Yes, for-profit. And um, initially, you know, as all, like all, you know, um, entrepreneurs, you you put a lot of your money, 
you know, and yeah. your passion to get mm-hmm. it started. And that's how Rear Freak started. Um, but as time goes on, you know, um, Rear Freak is able to generate some income, you know, to help fund our other events that we have coming up, um, such as, you know, Afrobeat Dance Academy, which is an event that... Yeah, I was, um, was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. we... we we do that event once every month and it's two wonderful, wonderful girls from Congo that teach the class. So this is where Rear Free comes, comes in. We put the event together and then we, you know, I, um, we get the, uh, Congolese dancers to teach the class. And you know they teach you know Afrobeat. That joint looks fun, man. Yeah. It is yeah. fun. The girls are amazing. They're amazing. Very is professional. Is it just for, for women or men? Men come. It's for men, so everybody's welcome. Sure. But you know, it's, it just so happens. Like <laughs> <laughs> it just so happens that most of the the folks that come Sign are up, so, female, yeah, female versus yeah, yeah, yeah. male. So, but yeah, everyone is invited. Everybody is welcome to join. Yeah, us. Afrobeat dance man. Dance man. Dance man. <laughs> Man, I, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I might add to my arsenal goals, you know. <laughs> arsenal, <laughs> arsenal Shout out to Afrobeat Dance Academy, man. If you're down in Florida, or if you got, you're gonna take that, you know, on the road. Like, I think you should take that on the road because it's like I wanna, I wanna, you know, what I'm saying go in one of them classes and, you know. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's also a future goal for Rear Freak. You know, I'm trying to have you know a, a branch of Rear Freak in one of the five top cities, um, where we find a huge population of. People of African descent. Yeah, that'll be really dope. Yeah, so. and just not people of African descent, because like right now, like most um most um right. Caucasian people want right. to you know dance right. to you yeah. know Afrobeat and all that That's stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I, so I like to put it friends of Africa. Yeah, friends of Africa. Yeah, being on that, I was going to touch on that um, because I see you have dance cl- dance classes and and whatnot. Like I came across an article on Forbes. Forbes.com ran by Nina Roberts, and I suggest um, our listeners go read that because it's very informative. And it was about um, enterprising immigrants fuel fuel um, apparel market with contemporary African Ankara print. So it was talking about the the ecosystem that young female entrepreneurs have built mm-hmm. and able to like sell Ankara, and you see it uh, uh, online, and it's pretty much everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and she was talking about. She got to one segment of um, the article, and she said, "There's customers that like the Ankara, but they're kind of scared to to um, put it on like Caucasian women mm-hmm. because they kind of thinking they'll be like a racial. Uh, what's the name? Racial those are, yeah, 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 like yeah. cultural appropriating. So mm-hmm. they're kind of scared. They like they like what they see, but right. they're kind of afraid to like mm-hmm. say." So what do you think about that? Interesting. Being that you you want to promote mm-hmm. the culture, the the mm-hmm. continent. That is uh you know a definitely definitely a very interesting article and I would love to you know read the full thing in detail. Mm-hmm. Um but based on the gist that you shared with me, I would um I would say personally that um so when I want to say a lot of that has to do has to do with um, the fact that they're probably not quite educated about what the Ankara fabric is all about. You know why, you know we why we wear it. You know it, it has nothing to do. I feel like there should be a disconnect. Why is it that this particular piece of clothing has so much stigma? Why why should it be that way? Um, I could say the same for like a jean jacket, you know. Um, so once those mindsets are shifted, you know, to where they could look at the regular Ankara fabric as just a piece of fabric, mm. then we'll start moving forward, you know. So in my opinion, I feel like, you know, you know, and I, that folks need to be, you know, open-minded, mm. you know, about views of different cultures you know, and just respect them for what they are. That's my take on it. Yeah, that. like, and just, to, you know what I'm saying, like, you, remember when, but, you know, you used to call people, like, African, like, you know, African Buddhist crashes in, like, high school? Mm-hmm. And then the same people now wearing dashikis, you know, white people. That's just that's just to cap off what you said, you know. Yeah. If it's dope fabric, you know. Yeah, gonna, if, if, it's, uh, if it's dope, just rock it, yeah, you know. I mean, yeah, I, I, I definitely don't want no limits on it, you know what I mean? Absolutely. The only thing is that, like, don't rock it and then take credit for it. <laughs> Definitely. You know, uh-huh. that that's that's my only thing about it. Like, 
Rock it, respect it. Mm-hmm. As somebody say, you say, yeah, it's from Africa, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like this, um, the Kali Jenners when they wear something and they like, oh, they the first to do it. It's like no, like do your research, like you said, and right. find out where it comes right. from. Right, right. So. Yeah. See, that oh. thing really touched your soul, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found it interesting. You know? True, true, true. Just messing with you. So, so um. The event in, in D.C. today, that was not it. So you have, the, it's a conference, uh, like a three-day, four-day conference? Yes, it's a three-day conference. And uh, today we had the opportunity to um, learn learn about, you know, different ways we can use social media to um, promote a cause, essentially. And it could be effect. it could work for any anyone for that matter who mm-hmm. is interested in raising funds no matter if you're raising funds to assist here in the United States or anywhere in the world um, so we learned a lot you know about you know running fundraisers social media uh, current statistics on malaria mm-hmm. and uh, you know what the United States government um, <laughs> the stance of the United the current United States administration on funding, um, you know, foreign aid. So mm-hmm. we learned a lot about that. And you're going to pitch uh, yes. to the to Congress this mm-hmm. coming week. On talk Tuesday. About, talk about that, yeah. So on Tuesday, um, the part of the organizers of the event... By the way, that's levels right there. Well, if you're listening, we have to that's, that's, the that's, that's levels yes, right there. You're going, to, you're going to Congress to pitch something. Yes. So, um, you know, our goal is that, you know, we want our voices to be heard. We want... You know, um, the president's malaria initiative to be continuously funded. Obama um, or Trump? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Bush. I, I'm sure they're not open up like they used to. Well, it's, it's being threatened right now because, you know, the current administration um, is suggesting that we cut foreign aid. So uh, that's where mm, we're kind of like. They're suggesting or they did it. Just, just I think they did it already. We don't want it to happen, so yeah, we're, that's why we're all <laughs> we're all out there, you know, making sure that we um, we talk to all our you know congressmen about the importance of not you know letting this go yeah. um, because at the end of the day, you know, it all comes full circle. We're all going to be affected by this one way or the other. Think about all the the uh, um, the army men, the folks in the army that go to these countries. What if they go there and contract malaria? So, uh, yes, while while it might not directly affect some of the folks here in the United States, you know, if you think about it, you know, you have family members that are there that are fighting or uh, a war or who are um, uh, helping, you know, because yeah. sometimes they send troops to help with mm-hmm, like aid, mm-hmm. refugee, all, the, all that stuff. And not just that, like... Um, if they don't fight it right now, what if, God forbid, you know, there's an outbreak of malaria? That's the thing. You know, they're going to be we jumping on that because yes, yeah, they don't we, want it to spread it all comes, the way here. It comes full circle. Yeah. It comes full circle. So if, if folks could see from that viewpoint, ah, so much life will be so much easier. Yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Before you, I want to ask, um, was entrepreneurship encouraging your household growing up? No. Oh. Yes, it wasn't. Um, and uh, growing up, I knew that I had to go to school. And that was... Lawyer. Be a lawyer. Doctor? Be a doctor. doctor. Or engineer. The engineer. rest? Yeah. Or disgrace. <laughs> or pilot. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, the same article I was talking about, the, um, the founder of um, All Things Ankara, mm-hmm. Nikki Billie Jean, mm-hmm. she had a beautiful coat. And she said... Um, She's like her mother encouraged her being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. because her mother would tell her like nobody ever got rich working for somebody else. Hey now, you know what I mean? That's so. true. So how'd you break out of that? You know, yeah. like to convince your people or yourself? So, um, okay, so you know how you just okay when you have an idea and when you have a passion for something and it just kind of sits in there, you know, in your heart, whatever we call it, your soul, your mind, just kind of sits in there. That's the same thing for Rear Freak. Rear Freak sat in my mind for like four years. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it was just like, it was about, it was almost bothering me. I felt like I had to do something, something to just kind of get it out of the yeah. way. So it was, I would say it was self born in a way. 
And most importantly, I surrounded myself with women who were entrepreneurs. That was what made it, did it for me. That yeah. was the moment I realized that, you know what, these women are here to support me. They provide me all this advice, this, mm -hmm. you know, um, tools. And that was what did it for me. So do you have like a close relationship with these women oh, yeah. currently? Yes, they are. Um, they are my sisters. They are my mentors. They mm -hmm. are. Gonna... Yeah, they, I need them. Yeah. Like, you know, when I'm going through, you know, some event planning and I'm like, oh my gosh, how is this going to work out? I need some assistance. I pick up the phone and I call. And then for s some way, somehow, they always know the right words to say to keep me motivated and yeah. to keep me going. So I would definitely, definitely attribute me getting into entrepreneurship as a result of the people that I surrounded myself with. Speaking about, you know, show, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you mentoring somebody else as far as like passing that down right now? You know what? Um, I share a lot of information. I believe in, you know, answering any questions, you know, that anybody asks me with regards to entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to mentor anyone. Right now, I don't have like one specific person that I'll call my mentor. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would, I would say that I get a lot of uh, requests and questions with regards to how do I plan an event? I need to meet with you so we can sit down and discuss, you know, the rundown for this event that I'm trying to put together. And I'm always happy to help. Mm -hmm. I believe that, you know, uh, the, the energy that you put out in the world is the same kind of energy that you get back. Mm -hmm. You cannot be selfish with your knowledge. You can't. I mean, what's the point? Facts. You know, we all want to, you know, you know, we all want to grow. We all want to you you know, be better. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you have that knowledge to be able to share with someone, you know, to help that person go from point A to point B, do Why it. Not? Yeah. Why not? So, so, um, I'm interested in knowing what feeling like, cause you said you had real freak sitting in your heart for four yeah. years. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested in knowing what was the feeling. I mean, that the feeling you got mm -hmm. once you finally, you know, laid your plans on paper and actually mm -hmm. took action to it. Like, was that like a relief? Like, what was the feeling you had? Yeah, so it was it was a huge relief. It was okay. a huge relief, definitely. Um, I mean, part of the reason why I kept rearing in my heart for so long was because of fear. Fear of what? Fear of what? What if it's not? You know, it's not successful. What if people don't like it? You know, there was a lot of what ifs. I just want to encourage you that. right now. The fact that people are coming to you and saying, you know, like, how do you do it? That's, that should be encouraging. People are peeping it. It's like, yo, she must be doing something. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Know you. Like, Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. But, you know, but before, you know, I was, you know, fear of failure, fear of what if it doesn't turn out to be what I wanted. And plus fear of the fact that, you know, growing up, I never really saw a lot of you know, entrepreneurs, you know, around mm. me to help me to, to see, you know, the result of what they've, they're doing and try to mm. mimic that and try to get there as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, once I, once I did Rear Freak, once I launched Rear Freak, it was thrilling, you know, it was like, wow, okay, I'm finally doing this. This thing and it was good. Don't Levels change. Yes, it was no. like I was like, yes. Yeah, so. so, so like you say, you never had entrepreneurs like a figure, um, like a figure you could look into and say, mm -hmm. oh, I see they doing this. So yeah. these ladies that inspire you, like, what do they do? What, what was it about them? Like, what they do that inspired you to say, you know what? I'll just jump off the cliff. And go. So, um, one of them. So, and uh, I don't know if she's watching now, but. One of them, her name is Evelyn. Her name Shout is out Evelyn to L. Shout out to Ele um, Evelyn. She is actually, she's a founder and CEO of Ankara Miami. And mm. uh, um, she puts a lot of events that also promote the African culture. And she also does um, um, Ankara Fashion Week, which is in February of every year. So she has definitely been a rock for me. And she let me, um, you know, shadow her and work with her on certain initiatives that she had. Um, and um, and uh, we've partnered on, you know, events together, like Afropolitan Miami. We worked together to put that. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so Afropolitan Miami. And also, I sometimes I'll call her and say, hey, okay, I'm doing this, you know, what do you think? And then she would give me her honest feedback. And that's what I appreciated so much um, from her. 
Um, another person is not necessarily a close friend, but is someone that I kind of watched what she did. Um, her name is uh, Lisa Nichols. She's a motivational speaker. And uh, and she was on the Steve Harvey show one time and she talked about, you know, she said something that kind of resonated with me. She said, you are your own rescue. And uh, she said, she basically was saying that you're your own rescue and no one is going to um, do whatever it is that you're trying to do in your head. You know, it's your, you are the one who is going to take you to the next level. Mm-hmm. That's basically what she That's was true. saying. That's true. Yeah, you, know, you, you touched on the word all week, right? We've been preparing for this, this podcast. <laughs> and I, I wanted to ask you, we hear this term, you know what I'm saying, like Afropolitan a lot. What does that mean? To you, first to of me. all, and like to the, you know, Google, the, the, like, what what does that mean? To me, Afropolitan means, you know, Africans that live in the diaspora. That's essentially what it means. So, um, so Afropolitan Miami is actually, um, actually, Afropolitan began here in D.C. There's a company called Drum Pulse Entertainment. They are the ones who started that. So we, um, Evelyn, um and myself do Afropolitan Miami, which is basically, you know, networking, connections, culture, cocktails. Um, and we expose uh, our guests to um, African music. Mm-hmm. And we have themes that go along with the events as well that also promote the African culture. Should everyone be an Afropolitan? Because, you know, so like people I follow on my, my Twitter, you know, mm-hmm. they make it, you know, uh, not, not to, you know, throw like an exclusive club yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Open it up. I mean, it's not, it's not exclusive. It's just the name. Okay. It's almost as if, okay. So this is how I, I view it. Um, if you call an event, if an event is a certain name, the people who are trying to attract may not necessarily be people of African descent. You could be friends of Africa, people who are attracted to culture and want to learn more about the culture. Now, do we call those folks Afropolitans? You could call yourself whatever you want. But at the end of the day, you're coming to an event where you're going to be exposed to the African culture. That's how I see it. Dope. Okay. Did you get your answer? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody out there got the answer too. <laughs> All right. Oh, I want to take this time to ask you a few questions. Sure. If you could, let's just think about it like a Q and A. Okay. You know, you just quick answer. Sure. Quick answer. Ooh, Rapid fire. This yeah. is a tough one. So, um, what motivates you? <sighs> My son. What's Micah? Yes. Shout out, shout out to Micah. Could you could you go in depth with that a little bit? Let's you know. Let's put that aside for now. Okay. What do you mean by your son motivates you? If you if you want to share. If you want to share. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So when I see my son play or what he's interested in and what he's involved in in school, you know, I see someone who can thrive. If all opportunities that sh- I showed or are shared with him, what I mean by that is, I want to be able to get to a point where I'm self-sufficient, and we're talking financially, mm-hmm. to where I can provide mm-hmm. him everything that he needs to be the best version of him. So that could mean, you know, from providing education or even helping him start his business. Yeah, and you know. And I see him as a way of, you know, breaking the cycle that's very typical of the African culture mm. where, you know, um, uh, you know, I almost want to pass along, you know, uh, what's the word? Sometimes I get like this because I know the word in French, but then I don't know it in English. Say, say it in French. Um, but I got the word. Um, so pass, I'm passing along a, uh, like a, like a heritage or, gotcha. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, Something like that. Mm-hmm. So that he can then take on what I have, what I've learned, what I've invested in, and do the same for his kids. And make it bigger. Yes. Even, you know, you know. Yeah. So he would go to school be, being comfortable, knowing that, okay, I've got you know my loans taken care mm-hmm. of. Now I can focus on me growing, being whoever I want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's my motivation. So with that, I mean, with yeah. that said, right, mm-hmm. would you... Would you um, push him towards a business mindset or would you let him pick what he wants to do? I will let him pick whatever he wants to do, Mm -hmm. but he would 
have to be the best version of whatever he wants to, to do. Dope. Mom goes. Yeah, Mom I goes. I feel, like, I feel like you're processing this information. You just have you just have something sitting right there. No, 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 no. Because I I feel what she's saying. You know what I mean? I'm I'm a product of what you're saying. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. Mom goes. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> when I want to, you know, what I'm saying like wrap this up with, you know, I'm not done with the question. I'm not <laughs> so, um, uh, and all well, most of his questions regarding um, real freak for now. Um, what is the best advice you've had so far? The best of advice I've had is um, when you have an idea, just run with it. Just do it. Don't be scared. Just run with it. If it fails, you will learn something from it. Mm-hmm. And then you will do something different the next time. Amen. Um. So I run with that, you know, with whatever initiatives I do with Rear Freak. And, and one thing that's also very important is that that fear that I had in the beginning with starting Rear Freak is also kind of what motivates me because I told myself, well, if I could start Rear Freak with the fear I had, I can do whatever. We're still with that fear. It's cool. It's there for, for a reason. It's there to tell you that, oh my goodness, you're about to do some, sh- I, can, I can curse. You're about to do some <laughs> stuff. So, so um, yeah, but, you know, it reminds me to keep on going. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. And what's the worst advice you've had? Like worst advice. Like that's a just, good one. It's like, yo, that think girl, that girl. Think about it for a sec. <laughs> that girl was something good. Can't even apply it, man. The worst advice. Um, uh, yeah. You know what? I, I can't think about it right now. Mm, okay. Shout out yeah. to the people advising you. Yeah. <laughs> well, so. I'm very picky when it comes to what I, you know, what I, because a lot of people have opinions. Mm-hmm. You know, oh my goodness. A lot it's of a people lot. have opinions about how you should live your life, how you should be who you should be, um, but at the end of the day, yes, you know, I would appreciate your advice, but at the end of, at the, end of the day, I decide who I want to be. Yeah. I decide, I make my choices. If I make a decision, I want to be the person to take responsibility for that. Um, I am not going to rely on someone else's opinion to, you know, be some, something or someone that I'm not. Definitely. So, yeah. So my last, qu- I mean, my last question, I mean, it's not really a question, but... I would say, um, what advice do you have for people, right, who want to, you know, create their own version of mm-hmm. Rear Freak, for example, or anybody who is trying to get into the business field? Entrepreneurship. Yeah, that. I'm sorry. Sorry. Entrepreneurship. 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 Yeah. So, um, okay. So for entrepreneurship, my the advice that I have for, you know, up and coming entrepreneurs is, don't be afraid. Just go for it. Mm-hmm. You know, just, just, just get in there, um, do what you got to do. Um, yes, there, there will, there will be challenges, a lot of them, but those are the challenges that make you a better person. Those are the challenges that make you a better leader. And, you know, that's that, those are the challenges that make you a better teacher to teach, you know, the next generation. So I would say, don't be afraid dive into it if you are interested in doing something similar to Rear Freak I am always open open to coaching offering suggestions um, and uh, just go with the flow uh, speaking of challenges right here stuck in the middle um, we always have to touch on you know that aspect of life when you felt like you know you faced so much challenges you know mm-hmm. um, you just kind of was just stuck mm-hmm. you know you needed you need a major help. You need a major push. Like you looked up to God saying, man, how can I, how can I pass this? So could you share with us, you know, a moment when you felt like you were really stuck between two worlds? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, well, it could be business. It could be personal. Sure, sure, Maybe absolutely. even in the inception, like, you know, coming up with, yeah, I, sure. I got, I got, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so okay, 
before um when i when i started uh rear freak um you know i i was going through you know a phase where um <laughs> i invested a lot of money into rear freak the beginning phases that is you know creating the website you know, and uh uh, purchasing every all the little things that are behind the scenes when it comes to registering a business, you know, and all that stuff. And uh, I, I definitely invested a lot of money in that. And and I said to myself, I looked at my bank account one day and I was like, is this really worth it? Yeah, I mean, like, yeah. seriously, I got a kid to feed, <laughs> you know, so that was the moment where I, you know, I realized that, wow, this, this, you know, I decided to get into this and this is what I'm getting back. I mean, like, seriously. So it was it was tough. Mm. It was tough. I mean, like, I'll look at my bank account and I'll be like, uh, Rear Freak, you need to pause for a second. <laughs> but you know what, though? I didn't let that stop me. And I'll have to, you know, reiterate the importance of faith, you know, when it comes to, you know, running a business. And, you know, um, you know, and I'm, I'm believing in a higher power. I, I, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, if it's God or if you're a Muslim, you know, whatever. But I put my faith, you know, in God. And I told him that, listen, I really, really, you know me. You know how passionate I'm, I am about Rhea Freak. And uh, I'm, not let, I'm not ready to let this go. So, you know what? I'm putting this in your hands. My financial status I don't know what you're trying to teach me. Maybe you're trying to teach me how to manage my money better. <laughs> Maybe this is what I'm going to learn from me. And guess what? I know a little bit about, you know, money management and, you know, planning and you know, budgeting <laughs> now and all that stuff. I just learned it all out of the blue. So I feel like, you know, yes, it might have felt like, you know, a burden and it might have felt like I was stuck, you know, in that moment, you know, uh, you know, juggling finances, you know, you know, trying to, you know, stay at bay and all that stuff. But, I've learned a lesson from it, and that's the lesson. That's what's helping me, you know, take Rear Freak to the next level right now. So I know what kind of risks to take with Rear Freak, and I know where I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's revisit this. Let's invest in this instead versus this one. So, yes, I was stuck at that time, but it, I learned a lesson from it, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, you, you spoke earlier about your love for Puff Puff, right? <laughs> Puff Puff is bae. <laughs> <laughs> oh, quick question. Have you read the book, um, Behold the Dreamers? Oh, no. no you should. Not. You should. It's I about mean, it, Well, it's not about Puff Puff. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about Puff Puff. I was just listening to it audio book when yeah. I heard it. Really? Okay. Yeah. okay. I mean, okay. Like the, it's funny because, you know, um, it was written by a Cameroonian, mm, okay. by the way. Um, and she has this, you know, the, the lady, the Cameroon woman she makes puff puff for her husband's um mm. employer mm -hmm. and her kids just one of her kids love it you know just loves puff puff and his caucasian so mm -hmm. it's just you know it's puff something puff you know big. yeah you should you should read it i'm pretty <laughs> yeah, sure you're going to say the title enjoy. of the book um, behold the dreamers okay yeah cool. behold the dreamers um have you heard of um 237 exclusive the radio app actually i heard about it today mm. yes um tell me more about it <laughs> well, I mean, it's uh, you want to take that one, Flex? No, you got it. Um, <laughs> it's a, a platform where um, African music has been played, mm -hmm. you know, currently right now. And um, I know the owner, he's talking about just playing um, the hits of Africa, you know, every major hit in Africa. He started off playing Cameroon, then he switched out to, you know, nice. entire Africa. Yeah, so it's definitely, I mean, it's good, you know, for you to pass time, you know, if you have Absolutely. work and you're, and you're allowed to listen to music, you can All listen right. to East African music, South African music, mm -hmm. Central, West, North. Awesome. Yeah. And that's, that's good to know because... Go ahead, sorry. Oh, no, finish, finish. That's good to know because, you know, that's one of the reasons why I also have Rear Freak mm -hmm. kind of put the word out there for, you know, um, platforms like yeah, that. Yeah, most deaf, most deaf. And my last, uh, my last plug. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. um, Hamayan. New Horizon. New Horizon. <laughs> New, New Horizon, Horizon products. Yeah, New you Horizon know, we're products. bringing you the best quality you can trust yeah. from okay. Africa, from the Cassava Leaf, Dole, Bobolo, Yondo, 
that box. The snacks. Throw them over here. No, 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 no the no, other no, one. The other one. The peanuts or so. The peanuts or so. No, not the one. <laughs> the peanuts or so. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, since you're based in Florida, right? Yes. And you're doing Real so Freak, nice. right? You know, um, wouldn't it be right? I mean, wouldn't it be, I mean, it's only right, you know, we promote, you know, stuff like that out right. there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not just, you know, apparels and all what I mean. Not definitely, to say it's definitely. not good, but, you know, people got to eat too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure, listen, people like food. People need to eat. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, is a product of the New Horizon? Yeah, New Horizon. Mm, very nice. You know. Very nice. So I, like I want to ask yeah, you, what, what would you say to the young girls who is trying to get into business? Like, you know, because young girls are so emotional. Like you say, you spend a lot of money. Yes. And females out here, they don't want to spend. <laughs> they wanted to come in. <laughs> they don't want to see that bank account deflating. You know? They feel like it's just going. They just don't. So, um, so your question is, what would I tell the, the young young, girls, younger yeah. girls who are interested in getting into entrepreneurship? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would tell them, you know, just <laughs> embrace your fear and run with it. Mm-hmm. Just like I mentioned earlier, you know, so, um, be willing to, um, deal with the consequences that come with it because that's how you learn to be a better person, Mm -hmm. uh, a a better entrepreneur. Um, and, um, and yeah, just go to the flow, seek a mentor. Let me tell you the importance of a mentor. (laughs) Having a mentor is everything. Seek someone that can coach you. Yeah. I mean, you really tell who's like a true business person Mm -hmm. because a lot of people, who are into business, I was here all the time, even with me, you know. Mm-hmm. You have to have a mentor. You have to. You have to have yeah, a mentor. You have to and have. that's really true, man. That's right. That's it's really right. true. You have to have that person that will keep you sane. Yeah, so. those fears, those fears, that person will comfort those fears, you know. Well, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. All right, man, shout out to our listeners online right yeah, now. Yeah. You know, shout out to uh, Malcolm if that's how you know say last name sorry if i butcher it but he's saying he's looking forward to partnering with you all right you know all right. Yeah, with partnership come on, hey, come, on, come, on come on yeah i know how to well anyways could you please tell the listeners how to reach you all right so um you can reach me um at uh Rio freak on facebook twitter and uh, instagram and Rio freak is spelled r-u-e-a-f-r-i-q-u-e and, uh, you know, if you use the hashtag or if you use the at, you, you will be able to locate me and find me. Um, email info at com. And uh, Giselle Esquise, she said you don't throw a meal. Oh, wait, wait. I never throw a meal. I still do it. And, and she, Tuesday. She had a question. She said, do you do real freak food? You answered it earlier. She said, do you do real freak full time or handle multiple jobs? And you had answered side, it. Side hustle. She's a hustler. <laughs> For right now. But you know what? Um, my hope in the future is that, you know, a real freak would, you know, will, not would, will become a huge platform to where I can run it full time. My vision, I, Royal Freak is not mine, but my vision for Real Freak is like, <laughs> I want to be somewhere in Senegal, you know what I mean? Like yeah. South Africa or something, yeah. courtesy of Real Freak. <laughs> Shout out, mean? A. Hopefully we'll oh, be one of the- I just had a real question. Well, it was, it was in my mind the whole time, you know, yeah. we're talking. Um, I know you're doing malaria, right? Yes. But, I mean, what, what made you think of Malaria instead of something like famine or, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. what made you pick malaria? Um, Well, I am a malaria survivor. Yeah, she did say that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I forgot about that part. The whole time I was thinking about was just food because, you know, I was watching (laughs) you earlier and, you know, they were talking about how, I mean, how many countries, I mean, like the different countries in Africa right now that, you know, are starving, like really starving. And and our president, our current president right now is is cutting funding for, you know, to support to help, you know, nourish people. And yeah. to me, it was just crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it was just crazy. Yeah. New Rising product is coming. You know what I mean? We want to make that pop. New Rising product is coming. Hey, yo, Reflex, man. Oh, <laughs> Newsweek, Newsweek. Yeah, Newsweek. Yeah, yeah, new, yeah, 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 new, new, uh, new segment we're introducing in the pod. Uh, run through some news, you know, that uh, happened in the week. To, uh, Google, you know, they had a... Uh, they've done this a lot, you know, um, in the past. But, you know, one of the, the Google deals this past week was Esther Afua Oklu. 
the Ghanaian woman who pioneered micro lending. You know, she uh, was a Google Doodle, you know, this week. So that's a Ghanaian boy. Yeah, my friend don't even. <laughs> <know>. <laughs> And we had a we had a Cameroon designer. Her name is Marianne, and uh, we reached out to Marianne to have her on the pot. Hopefully that happened. But she was featured on Forbes, and she, you know, is a Ankara designer. So yeah, she was in that article. Yeah, 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 yeah. So shout out to uh, shout out to Marianne Coco. Um, and we also had um, a three month, you know, internet block in Cameroon, and it was just reinstated. Um, you know, that made waves over the internet. So, shout out to the people of Ambazonia. Now, nah, yeah. Ambazonia so can listen to can us, listen baby. To us, yeah, podcast. Yeah, 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 definitely. And, you know, saying last but not certainly not least, um, you know, African countries have been doing this already, but Cameroon is joining the wave of designing cars and having it manufactured in China. So, awesome. And they're planning on parading the cars, you know, like in the near future, in a couple of years in Yaoundé. So, we'll see how that goes. How you say it. designing? Yeah, they're designing in Cameroon. They have a how manufacturer. The, how are they going to design? They're going to use what computers to design cars. Don't ask me. I'm just reading news. <laughs> oh, my bad, though. My bad. But it's just that happens. Sam, man, them people, they, though, they need to join the new wave, man. The new wave of technology, man. They need to accept, embrace technology 100. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Real freak Stella Kinawa was in the building, man. We appreciate we you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we appreciate all our listeners, our wa- uh, you know, people watching right now. You know, throwing those comments out there. Yep. Stuck in the middle podcast. We love ya. We out. We out. <laughs>